Bingo. Careful, the ink's not quite dry. What do you think of it? Murdered on the streets of Tombstone by the Earps and Doc Holliday. It will cause more shooting, I fear. You fear? More shooting, more business. Put it in the window. Oh, and uh, take a front view from outside. Be sure you have a sharp focus. I want all of my readers to see that sign. Are you editorializing a bit, Dameron? Editorializing? You accuse the Earps and Holiday of murder? Well, they haven't even been indicted yet. Oh. The San Francisco and Denver newspapers want to tell me how to run mine. Oh, we get the point. More killings, more readers. I need a drink, don't you? Yeah. Allow me, gentlemen. Courtesy of the Tombstone Nugget. And, uh, oh, incidentally, a little tip. The Earps and Holiday will be killed or hanged. <laughs> Within just a few hours after the O.K. Corral shootout, the enemies of Wyatt Earp were in full cry. Led by Editor Dameron of The Nugget and Sheriff John Behan, the outlaws of Cochise County were determined to assassinate Wyatt, his brothers, and Doc Holliday. They would do this with bullets or the trumped-up charge of first-degree murder. Many correspondents from big city papers gathered to report what they felt might become a mass lynching, legal or illegal. And listen to this. Three unarmed cowboys were murdered at the O.K. Corral. This is a stench in the nostrils of all the people of Arizona. Doc Holliday and the Earps must face an outraged citizenry for their crimes. A stench in the nostrils of all the people of Arizona. Outraged citizenry. Dameron is worse than a liar. He doesn't even know how to write. Keep your temper, Doc. Yeah, we got enough trouble. If I murdered Dameron, a jury would convict me. They don't know good writing from bad, that drunken hack. What? The Bonnie Blue flag, Doc. Bad news, Wyatt? What'd the coroner's jury say? Well, they exonerated us, but... But what? The whole town's ready to explode. Vigilantes with rifles patrolling the street. Ike Clanton and Sheriff Bean have gone to the grand jury. Where's Judge Spicer? Hasn't arrived in town yet. I don't think the grand jury's going to indict us, but Tom Fitch thinks that when the judge does get here, that he's going to have to hold us on Bean's warrant. Cheer up, Wyatt. Isn't Spicer a friend of ours? He always has been, and he don't scare easy. Oh, but they're going to pressure him hard, and I don't know what legal tricks Bean and his lawyers are going to try and pull. Doc Brocious and Ringo are top dogs now. They just moved into the room and house across the street. You think they'll talk to you? They cuss me, but they talk. Well, I'm going to visit with Virgin Morgue. Why don't you go over and get Brocious to brag about what plans they have for the Earps? We killed three outlaws, and here we are, holed up in a hotel room as if we were to blame. If I had a praying acquaintance with the good Lord, I'd ask him whose side he's on. What you so nervous about, Sheriff? That grand jury won't vote an indictment. It's loaded with vigilantes. I never thought they would. We'll blast the herbs out of that hotel during the funeral tomorrow. No, we won't. We agree to that only as a last resort. Well, sure, if you got any other resorts? Yes, we'll do everything legal. We'll do everything according to law. That's funny. Real funny. Shut up. Let me in talk. I've got a warrant charging the herbs and Doc with murder. The judge won't be here till around 2 o'clock. He'll have to hold him without bail because tomorrow's Sunday. You mean we'll get him in the calaboose? Either that or we apply for a change of venue and move him to Tucson. I think it's better if we get him on the road. It hey, sounds real good. All except Doc.
What do you mean by that? I mean, I'm not in favor of bushwhacking Doc. The Earps, sure, but not Doc. He was the OK Corral shooting with the rest of them. What about you, Broch? Is you sore, Doc? Well, not that sore. He's Wyatt Earp's best friend. He'd gun either one of you with one word from Earp. He's off, Ben. It ain't Doc's fault that he got messed up with the Earps. Doc is a born hoodlum at heart. Well, of all the fool things... All right, that's enough out of you. Now get out of here. Yeah, go set up your legal shenanigans. We'd rather gun you than Doc. All right. All I want is the Earp brothers. I don't insist on Doc. Insist? Slow down, Ringo. I don't like him either, but we need him. Now cool off. Hold it. Uh, hello, Doc. I'll, I'll talk to you later. You'll talk. To you. That's assault with a deadly weapon, Doc. You're under arrest. Very well. Take me. Get brave, you skulking polecat. You're the one who started that murder talk against the Earps and me. Come on, Bean. Make the arrest. Well, Judge Spicer hasn't signed the warrant yet. He hasn't, huh? Well, I'll sign your warrant right now. Go for your gun. Watch yourself, Doc. Get off the street, be in front of. You and Ringo, the sheriff's bodyguards? He ain't worth getting sore at, Doc. Curly's right. Come on up the room and have a drink, Doc. Well, the deacon won't like me drinking with you. But he doesn't even like me drinking with myself. Come on up to the room, huh? We've had our rows, Doc, but we kind of like you. In fact, we was going to send you a special warning, huh, Ringo? Warning? Yeah, sure. Very decent of you. Well, don't you want to know what about? I await the day no more. You mean spit it out? Oh, sure. We think you ought to leave town, Doc. Get into a poker game at my ranch for a couple of days. Any special reason? No, 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 no special reason. Well, Doc is no fool. Tell him the truth. I think I know. Sheriff Bean wants the Earps and me in jail over the weekend. So we can be gunned down in our cells. Ringo and me ain't fools either, Doc. Well. You go to jail and you'll be transferred to Tucson. Change of venue, Doc. Yeah, that's it. Only you won't never reach Tucson. Now, Doc, why don't you cut loose from the Earps? Wyatt Earp and his brothers are finished. It's Curly Brocious and John Ringo from here on out. We're going to be bosses in Tombstone, just like we run the rest of the county. Throw in with us, Doc. You can make money easier than standing at a faro table. Well, it's an interesting proposition. But I'm confronted by a force majeure. Your coup de théâtre needs careful ratiocination. It'll take a little time, but... You'll be hearing from me. Good day. What does he mean? Means he's gonna think about it. I hope he acts smart. Be an awful waste, Doc, getting himself bushwhacked. It's all up to Judge Spicer. If he goes along with Bean, we'll be sitting ducks. Johnny will have to arrest us first. We can't afford to be disarmed and go to jail. And we can't afford to defy the court. Now, Doc, you and I will turn ourselves in on that warrant. Ask for immediate release. What if Spicer denies bail? Well, it's the first chance we'll have to take. Just for fun, what's the second chance? Trying to stay alive with a hundred gunslingers in town? Let's go to court. Why didn't I join up with Brocious and Ringo? Because you don't care that much about staying alive. I'm going to lock the door from the outside keep your guns handy. You reckon we'll get out of this? I'd say it was a toss-up. Yes, Your Honor. You will note that Mr. Clanton and I have signed the complaint. And it's supported by affidavit signed by nine eyewitnesses. Yes, I see. Well, the court has no alternative but to order the arrest of Wyatt, Virgil, and Morgan Earp. And Dr. Holliday. 
However, the court understands that Virgil and Morgan Earp were wounded in yesterday's affray. Well, not too seriously to be held in jail, Your Honor. That will be decided when the court has more information. I'm exempting Virgil and Morgan Earp from immediate arrest. You may bring in Wyatt Earp and Dr. Holliday. Uh, Your Honor, Doc Holliday has refused to be arrested. And uh, Earp will resist, Your Honor, so Sheriff Bean needs authority for special deputies. Uh, yes, Your Honor, I'll need at least uh, 15 men. The court is not of the opinion that Marshal Earp will resist you, Sheriff. They're coming in now. You may be seated. If the court please. Yes, Mr. Fitch. I represent Marshal Earp, his brothers, and Dr. Holliday. We understand that Sheriff Bain has asked for an arrest order charging my clients with murder in the first degree. The sheriff has the warrant duly signed. Is the court aware that this is an atrocious charge against four peace officers who were performing their sworn duty? The court can have no opinion of the charge, Mr. Fitch. My clients appreciate the court's position, Your Honor, but they ask that they be immediately released on bail. Oh, no, you don't. Your Honor, the court knows that a person charged with murder in the first degree... Sit down, Sheriff Bean. Yes, sir. Proceed, Mr. Fitch. Thank you. I ask that the court hear Marshal Earp, who will explain why the granting of bail is necessary in this case. The court will hear Marshal Earp. Your Honor, Tombstone is filling up with Clanton outlaws. One of them, Mike Clanton, started the fight at the O.K. Corral. When the fight began, he begged for his life and ran from the place. Now he comes here with Sheriff Bean and cries murder. Now, I say to the court that if Dr. Holliday, my brothers, and I are disarmed and put in jail, we'll all be killed. What's the matter, Earp? You getting scared now? That will do. Sheriff Bean. Yes, Your Honor. I only reached Tombstone half an hour ago and came directly here. I was not aware of the conditions described by Marshal Earp. He's lying, Your Honor. I want them all locked up. You just try it, Johnny. That's enough, gentlemen. Mr. Fitch, the court will grant bail in the sum of $10,000 for each of the accused. Are you prepared to furnish bond? Yes, Your Honor. Judge Herring and Mr. Solomon have opened their bank vaults as a favor to my clients. Not as a favor, Judge. This is a vote of confidence in Marshal Earp. That's the man who should be locked up. Your Honor, he's one of Earp's vigilantes. That's enough, gentlemen. Mr. Earp... You and Dr. Holliday will appear here at 9 a.m. Monday for your preliminary hearing. Now you bring the bond money into my chambers. Well, you're smart, don't you? You can't wiggle out of this, Earp. I'm going to see you and your brothers hang. the time of day. He gave us bail. I'm betting they scare him. They never have before. I think he was trying to show judicial impartiality. You oh, hope. Oh, why? Uh, I'm just coming after you. Oh, he's my latest addition. In it, I nail most of the lies that Dameron printed about the fight at the OK Corral. Thank you, Mr. Clum. Wyatt, I've got uh, three Eastern newspaper correspondents in my tent. They'd be mighty interested to hear your version of the fight. Might be a good idea to talk to them, Wyatt. Not now. I gotta get back to Virgin Morgue. Maybe later. How do you like that, Doc? Correspondence from big city newspapers, and he won't even talk to them. Don't crowd him now, John. He's worried. Things go badly in the courthouse? Hmm. Wyatt's friend held us on a murder warrant. Judge Spicer did that? That's right. $10,000 bail for each of us. Why don't you talk to the judge? You're the mayor. He'll listen to you. Well, all right, Doc. I'll, uh, I'll try. You'll have to do better than try. If Spicer gets scared, that'll be three Earps and one Doc Holiday for gallows beat. <laughs> I knew we should have listened to Bean. Wyatt Earp's still walking free with both his guns. I don't reckon Holiday's coming over to us either. 
No. There he goes, following her up to the hotel, just like a tame wolf. It ain't locked. Somebody talked too much. Herp was way ahead of me. He walked in that court with his lawyer and got bail. Oh, shut up. You can't explain it, so don't even try. Listen to me, Ringo. You heard Ringo. We ought to give you a pistol whipping, always blaming somebody else. If you'd only keep your temper. Let the sheriff have his say, but you make it quick. All right, I will make it quick. I've got a dozen eyewitnesses. Spicer will have to rule against the Earps and Doc at that preliminary hearing. Then we'll have a change of venue at Tucson, just like I planned. You can't learn. You just can't learn, can you? But I tell you, it'll work. I know it'll work. We tell you. No more legal hocus-pocus. We're going to blast the Earps out of their boots. Right, Ringo? That's right. Tomorrow morning, doing the funeral. That hotel ain't no fort, being. Ten good boys can take them. No. Uh, What's wrong? That just won't work. That's, that's all. You claim you're honest cowboys. You don't even wear guns in town. You're going to prosecute the Earps for murder. But no, you want to send your boys over to that hotel and wipe them out. I've got a nice legal hanging all set up for the Earps, but you can't wait. Get out. But Ringo. I said get out. Curly, he's boring me. Take your hands off me. We need a new sheriff. Yeah, uh, but not right away. We gotta finish the herbs off first. We take the herbs tomorrow, I favor a new sheriff by Monday. Good idea, Ringo. It'll be kind of a celebration. <laughs> Some gunslingers are gonna crash the cosmopolitan tomorrow during the funeral procession. I'll get the word to him, Sheriff. And that isn't all of it either, Judge. Wyatt has quite a few eyewitnesses of his own. There's Mrs. Addie Boland, C.S. Fly, J.R. Coleman. Who the... now, John? Judge? The court will examine all the evidence with witnesses under oath. I cannot tolerate special pleading. But Judge Spicer, why, it's a personal friend of yours. The law has no friends. Ah, Judge... I'm sorry, at... John, but I think you'd better go. Uh, it's not going to be too difficult for him. They can come up from the cellar or from the lobby. They got three different flights of stairs to choose from. They can get up on top of the roof and come down that ventilator shaft out in the hall. Good shooting will stop them. We can't afford any more shooting right now. We still have a right to defend ourselves, Wyatt. Not while Judge Spice is considering a murder charge against us. We've done all the gunfighting we're going to do for a while. So we just sit here and let them kill us? Now, I have an idea that I think might work. See you tomorrow morning. You uh, better get a move on there, Brochers. We're going to be uh, late for a funeral. <laughs> I kind of hate following after double crosses, even dead ones. But I guess we got to have an alibi. That's right. We won't know a thing about what's going on at the Cosmopolitan Hotel. Hold it. We're just going to a funeral, Marshal. Any law against that? You're going to be a mite late. You still have time to mourn the departed. Move out. Faces to the wall. 
Doc. How many more on the roof? Go find out, Marshal. I will. There's two more. Turn around. No trouble up there? No, they were too busy trying to get the top off the ventilating shaft. You got enough handcuffs, Doc? Not enough for Ringo and Brocious. They won't need them. At least kill them, Wyatt. We'll see. Get inside. Gentlemen, please don't disturb us. What are you aiming to do, Earp? Shoot us in the back? No shooting. Curly's first. You get over there. All right, you start the fight. You can have your chance, Ringo. Doc, you better go in there and stop him. He's angry enough to kill him with just his fist. I never take notice of vulgar brawling. Leave him alone, Verge. Ah, oh, we're in enough trouble already. Oh. A doctor knock on the door and tell him to quit. Well, if you insist. Why, right, Deacon, have you been playing rough games with Brocious and Ringo? Nice going, White. How bad is Brocious? I think he's got a fractured jaw, so. Doc, take a look at it. Mayor Clum, will you see that these men get over to the jail? They came at us with guns. All right, pick them up, get them out of here. Take them all out, boys. Good job on him, Wyatt. Nice going. Now, what's the matter, Mr. Mayor? Funeral's over. We still hold the town. Why so glum? Nothing to be cheerful about. Uh, has something else happened? Well, Wyatt, I don't know how to tell you this, but... Well, Judge Spicer has already started the preliminary hearing. That's not supposed to start till tomorrow. I know. But he must have changed his mind. He's already questioning Johnny Bean and some other witnesses right now. I may have blundered, White. I tried to talk to Spicer on your behalf. But I... I might have prejudiced him against you. I'm sorry, White. Yeah. Sounds like a necktie party after all, White. Not good. Not good at all. Have you any ideas how we can cheat the gallows, Deacon? Well, if I was talking to a newspaper man now, I'd say, uh, well, it looks pretty bad, sir. But we aren't dead yet. I think I'll go downstairs and order something to eat. Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame and long live his glory and long may be told. Quiet Earp, quiet Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live 
live his fame and long live his glory and long may his story be told.